Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Okay. Today we're going to take a look at the TID Radio H8 Ham. Now there's another version of this radio that's the H8 GMRS. This is the Ham one. Make sure you get the Ham one. It's a nice radio. Um, it's got some interesting and unique features that we'll discover. Um, I took extensive notes on it uh, as I was evaluating it and tried to capture those in a few charts. Let's take a look at the charts. We're taking a look at the TID radio and the model is H8, that's Hotel 8, and then there's a space and then the word in all caps, HAM. There is also an equivalent of this for GMRS. Be sure you get the ham radio because they enforce uh, using the, the bands. Here's what's in the radio. You've got a manual, a belt clip. You've got the little uh, wrist strap right there. Uh, antenna, the batteries on the back. A little card with some uh, web addresses you can go to. One of the things you can do with the battery is you can put the battery out here by itself, use this USB-C to charge it, and here it's got an adapter so you can plug it in to the North American uh, electricity. And this right here can go in any adapter like in your car or something like that. Or you can plug it in this way where you put the radio into the charger and you also are able to do it that way and you get this little light coming here. There is a little light on the battery on the bottom that you can use to help understand when it's fully charged. This is what the back of the radio looks like. There's nothing there, no labels. They don't have any labels on it yet. Uh, I think they're working on it. Uh, there is no FCC ID number so that's something that's got to come real quick. And on mine, which was obviously a prototype version, there was no cover over the uh, earphone, headphone, uh, and microphone jacks. This uh, screw hole up here would be what you would screw in to hold that thing tight uh, over these. Otherwise, it's not waterproof. You can get water in uh, through these things. Uh, if you have this, make sure you put it on. Okay, let me spend a moment just on a little bit of uh, Administrivia. Uh, you can help this channel thrive by going to patreon.com slash ke0og and becoming a monthly patron at one of these levels. Electron, neutron, proton, or the highest quark. And the one-time tip jar continues to be available at decastler.com slash tip hyphen jar and your assistance is enormously appreciated. Let's take a look at the manual. This is the manual for the TID radio and you'll find it quite useful. It's over 50 pages thick. It's got a lot of stuff in there. I just want to talk about a couple pages. Here are your main features. Uh, dual watch, dual band. Uh, you can operate... Um, this does not say crossband. Uh, in there. This is not a crossband repeater that I can figure out. But you can have the upper frequency on UHF or VHF and vice versa for the uh, other one. There is also the CTCSS codes that you need, uh, squelch um, that you can adjust. There are 199 programmable channels. Now the last 10 channels of those come pre-programmed to the NOAA weather radio stations. Interesting thing to know. If you go back to channel one and then go back one more, you'll get uh, channel 199. And you can keep going back through those things until you hear the NOAA weather radio code. The 1050 hertz tone is for Europe. There's an SOS emergency function that's rather lame. Uh, you press a long press on the button on the top 
and it will go with some kind of a weird alarm noise. And um, it would be, I don't know, it's like having a whistle or something. It is a color display. One of the problems with the display is when it uh, goes dark, it goes dark all the way off. You have to touch something to bring up the uh, display again. Uh, so you can see what it is. There is a built-in FM radio. It covers the entire international band. Uh, the uh, U.S. radio is about 88.1 up to 108 uh, megahertz, okay? The Vox, please don't use the Vox. Voxes on two-meter radios are too problematic. It does have all your usual scan functions. And... You can do dual watch, so you can have two different frequencies. They don't have to be one UHF, one VHF, but two different frequencies uh, showing in the uh, front panel, and you can listen to them at the same time. Um, there is the usual Kenwood uh, accessory, which you would use for um, programming. Okay? Now, that you can do channel or frequency mode. Channel is what is labeled as MR for memory recall, and frequency is labeled VFO for variable frequency oscillator, or another way of saying it is direct entry of the frequency. Time timer, it has all the DTMF if there are any auto patches left in your area. The setting and storing of channel names works, that is done via the programming. It has the feature of a busy channel lockout. You don't always want to do that because if there's like a little bit of noise which captures the squelch uh, in there and you get that in and out, it will keep you from transmitting on that channel. So I don't normally turn that on. Uh, the frequency steps, you can put it whatever works for the band plan in your area. The frequency offset, this is for repeaters, in the United States on 2 meters is 600 kilohertz, either plus or minus, and on 70 centimeters it's uh, 5 megahertz, plus or minus, okay? This frequency offset is universal. Now, you, if you're programming a channel, that's where you want to put the frequency offset in there. Um, now here's something unique, Bluetooth programming. I've never seen a radio where you can program it with Bluetooth. It does 10 watts, 5 watts, and a half watt. The half watt would be for very close communications. 5 watts more normal, you can go to the horizon on 5 watts. And 10 watts just to say that it's a 10 watt radio. One of the nice things about the manual is it shows uh, all of the various features on here and has underneath here a key to tell you what each one is, which is very handy. Note that on top, um, this is the flashlight. This is the little light that glows green when you're receiving a signal, red when you're transmitting, and is off when you're in standby. This little thing, 15, is actually a programmable button, as are uh, these here, 11 and 12. One of the nice things I like about the manual is that it shows everything that can appear on the screen, and it gives a, a code to tell you what's going on. This says that the battery is fully charged, um, you're on high power with wide mode. Most uh, ham radio FM is uh, wide mode. The frequency, okay, which channel that is in if you're doing channel type stuff. Um, and the frequency that is picked is this bottom one here. And this tells you whatever features are used for the channel. In this case, a CTCSS tone. This is also very interesting. I have never seen this in an instruction manual before. As you know, when you transmit and you push one of these keys, you will send out 
the DTMF, dual tone multi-frequency tone, that your phone sends out. Um, and you can use this with a repeater auto patch. So what they're telling you is this is what they do in uh, receive. This is what they do in transmit. You've got your one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The O that should be down here is not. These two, which should be here and here, are not. And A, B, C, D, which should be here, are not. They are located this way. Now, A, B, C, and D are valid DTMF tones. They're used by the military, but can also be used uh, by repeaters. Let's take a look at the specs. Note here it says 144 to 148 if you, and 420 to 450. If you try to transmit outside of these, the radio will say, uh, well, it will object and say cancel. It will not allow you to do that. However, you can receive on these frequencies. Like I said, there's a couple hundred memories. I think there's actually 199. The operational voltage is 7.4 uh, volts. Now, I want to go back and look at another chart here. And that is uh, this chart right here. Notice the uh, 5 volt uh, USB-C port right here. Okay, so you're putting 5 volts in to charge a 7.2 volt battery. How do you do that? The way you do that is with a DC to DC converter. Now there are two types. There's the buck type and it will lower the DC voltage. And then there's the boost type which will take the five volts from here and boost it up to be enough to charge what's going on in here. That is a very, very interesting feature and something that we are seeing more on uh, the Chinese radios that they want a 5-volt input instead of a 12-volt input. Okay, so here's your, your 10 watts. It doesn't tell you. You can also do 5 and 0.5. Okay, 50-ohm antenna impedance, which is good. Here's the RF output power modulation. Now, this says adjacent channel and transmission current. Receiver sensitivity, noise, and so on. Okay. Now, let's put this thing on the spectrum scope and see what we get out of it. On two meters, it's excellent. Uh, the fundamental is about minus seven uh, dBm. And the uh, second harmonic, which is right here, is about minus 63. So if you take seven off of that, you're about 56 dB down to this first one right here. That's not what I would call stellar, but it is very good compared to most Chinese radios. So on two meters, you're fine. However, it is unacceptable on 70 centimeters. This is 150 megahertz, 300, 400, and in this case, 440 is what I'm transmitting in. Okay, so here is the second harmonic. And note that it's like 21 db below the fundamental on some frequency up in the uh, 900 megahertz range uh, 980 because i transmitted on 440. now the problem with this is that 20 db down is three and a half s units so if normally you hear a signal at s9 this would be like hearing a signal at S5 or S5 and a half, which is perfectly readable. So the reason this is unacceptable is because um, this, and the, my scope only goes up to 1.5 gigahertz, but this is just not down where it should be. It should be down somewhere in here. And the same with this one, okay? I do note, on the two meter one that as we go up in frequency, we get a little bit more, but the antenna will not transmit these upper ones. Now here, you will get some uh, 
reduction because the antenna is tuned. Uh, but this right here, this should be way down here. This should be way down here, okay? We need to get back to that 50, 55, or 60 dB down for that second harmonic, all right? So I just tell you this so that you'll know that it's happening. I hope the people at TID Radio will take a look at this and rejigger that uh, transmitter output circuit so it does it right. Now what we're going to do is take these two radios. I only have one TID radio. So I took an, a Redivus RT5RV, which was reviewed in Ask Dave uh, 1032, and used it to communicate. I put a recorder right next to one of them, then I went into the other room with the other. So we're going to hear two things. First, we're going to hear from here to here, and then we'll hear from here to here. Testing, testing, testing. This is a Redivus radio transmitting to the TID radio. This is the TID radio transmitting to the Redivus radio. So transmitting to the Redivus radio from a TID radio. Now I want to get into something that I've never seen before in programming a Chinese radio, and that is the ability to program it from either your iPhone or your Android phone. There are two apps available, one in Google Play called OD Master, and then in the iOS Apple Store, another one called OD Master. This is for your phone. I was able to program the downloading from the radio to the phone, but when I made changes, it would not go back. I was unable to write to the radio. In addition, there is a way of doing uh, PC programming. Okay, if you go to odmaster.net, and you can create a little account here, and then you can program on here on the PC, which then sends something to your phone, and then that will send it back to your uh, radio. Anyway, that's the promise. It is not the reality. Uh, like I said, with the phone one, I could not write from the phone to the radio. And the PC programming, I was never able to log in at all. So I would say that these two are a work in progress. However, there is something that you can do about it and that is simply use Chirp. Chirp is available for this radio. You can download it. It's free at chirp.danplanet.com. Okay, this one right here. Now, now the radio does not come with the programming cable, so you're going to have to borrow a Kenwood-style programming cable in order to make this work. Um, most, not all, of the Chinese radios use this same cable. The, the Kenwood Convention. So um, the vendor's TID radio, the model TD for TID radio, H8-HAM, okay? And at that point, uh, it will you'll see a progress bar go by here. Of course, the radio needs to be on when you do this. This is what it looks like on the programming page. I downloaded a bunch of repeaters. Here's WaterDog, which is just very close to me here okay and that came down and uh, you can also look see it says memories and settings the settings this is just one of the four different settings panels shows you all kinds of little things that you can do and you can reprogram those keys for a lot of different things now i want to draw your attention to something very interesting in chirp if you go to radio query source, you can pick any one of these. Pick the repeater book, it's free. If you go to the radio reference, you have to log in. It's a paid subscription. The repeater book is free. So I logged in to the repeater book and it gave me this page right here. Um, amateur Colorado and near my latitude, which is 
approximately right. Um, they're in the, you know, <laughs> fairly close. And then give me all the repeaters within 150 miles. You can limit the bands or modes or a filter like a county or a hospital or something like that. You click OK and that will download it to a separate file. Here's the one from the TID radio. That's the image for that. And here is the one for the repeater book. Now you can select some of these, copy them, and then paste them right here, right there into uh, where you want it to be. Okay, so you can just paste them right in. Copy and paste. You don't have to take everything that's in the repeater book and put it over there. As it turned out, there are fewer than 150 repeaters within 150 miles of me. And so they all fit. They all go in here. So that is a very nice feature of Chirp. Makes things uh, very easy in that regard. So here's what you see uh, on Amazon. I could not find a page that had just one radio. Now, you can go to a page with just one radio, but you get two batteries, you get um, a speaker mic, and some other stuff like that. So if you want to go in with your buddy, you get these two things, but you don't have a programming cable. I got my programming cable from PowerWorks, and it is the so-called RED cable. Now, here is right here a little URL. Amazon, A-M-Z-N dot T-O slash three, lowercase u, 176, lowercase f, lowercase u. And this will take you to this page right here. And it will still be that same price. However, this will benefit the channel if you buy it this way. There are some additional links in the description below that come from TID Radio that you could take a look at too. And we'll put those in the description just below this video. So the TID radio, uh, do I recommend it? Yes, but a big caveat. One is the transmit uh, on 70 centimeters. The uh, second harmonic and the third harmonic are just flatly out of control. They need to modify the transmitter output section so that those harmonics do not go right through that filter. They've done a good job on two meters. Now they need to do it on 70 centimeters. By the way, for those charge, I used my Regal Spectrum Analyzer over here and a little device that samples. See, this is the Spectrum Analyzer right here. And it's got lots of nice buttons on it and so on. To measure the output of the various uh, uh, fundamentals and harmonics, I used this uh, Regal DSA815 spectrum analyzer that handles from 9 kilohertz up to 1.5 gigahertz. Some say gigahertz. I think it's gigahertz. Um, and this will tell you where the harmonics are. This piece of equipment can be traced back to standard caveats. The other caveat, of course, is I can't get the Bluetooth part to work. If somebody does get it to work, please let me know. I think uh, I'm going to take TID Radio uh, for what it said in the email they sent to me, and that is that the online stuff is a work in progress. So hopefully that'll be pretty nice. You don't have to bring programming cables or stuff like that, you can just make a change to your radio from your phone. It's a really nice thing to do. So there you have it. I hope you enjoy this channel. Please subscribe. Please like. Also note that just following uh, my sign off here, there is a page that shows you how to get in touch with me. Okay. Be a snail mail, an email address, or via a patron comment. Um, and then there is a list 
of uh, the patrons. So, thank you all very much, and until we next meet, 73.